All right, so we're going to pick on somebody today, and it looks like it's going to be John Clash. All right, uh, before we get into that, let's... Oh, what's going on here? Of Armageddon, 1,000 years. Did you hear that? Armageddon, 1,000 years. Of Christ. All right, so he, this guy, don't speak a lick of English, but he knows how to say "thousand year reign of Christ," which is not in the Bible anywhere at all. And so let's pick on John Clash. After the first Avatar came out, people were getting depressed after watching it. I'm not going to play the whole entire thing because it's like four minutes long, and I'm probably going to get flagged after just uh, you know playing it, but. I thought it was super interesting that this actually happened and people were getting depressed after watching the movie. When I woke up this morning after watching Avatar for the first time yesterday. All right, so let's take a look. Is it Avatar or post-Avatar? Well, it doesn't matter. All right, so to me, yeah. To me, cartoons are Bugs Bunny, Foghorn, Leghorn, that sort of stuff. This is... I don't know what kind of cartoon this is. This is creepy stuff. This is like a. Hey, uh, this is like, uh, you know, the Nephilim stuff. You got the the sons of God coming down and having sex with your, <clears throat> you know, your wife and your daughter and you and everybody else. And I mean, this is what this stuff is. This is ridiculous. This is not based on reality at all. I don't. You know, if you like it, whatever. I don't care. I don't care for this sort of stuff. This is weird yesterday the world seemed gray it was like my whole life everything i've done and worked for lost its meaning lost its meaning after watching this movie that's what's going on here call in i want to hear from you one eight seven seven tell hln joining me uh, joe piazza entertainment writer cnn.com also with us welcome back our psychotherapist stacy kaiser yeah. psychotherapist you know what a, a, a therapist that's a psycho that's a psychotherapist uh, Joe, you did some digging on this. Um, how widespread is this phenomenon where people are feeling depressed? And I, I guess the way, to, in layman's terms, they see this movie, and especially if they see it in 3D, they're really feeling it, and then their world is not this, so that's what's leading to the depression, in a nutshell? They're definitely going to flag me for uh, playing it for that long. But that's crazy, right? That, um, that people watch this movie and then they become depressed. That's uh, very interesting to me, right? And so this is my position on it. The movie, going back to what I said at the beginning, where it's like, it's very family-oriented. Uh, Jake Sully saying... Oh, All right, so John, you're talking about how this movie is making people depressed. And I'll, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty obvious. You, you got some fantasy world nonsense... And I, I, I can't imagine what's making them depressed, but how do we overcome depression? And that's by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, what causes depression, and that is unrest, right? And so all these people that suffer from depression, all they need is Jesus, right? Because he fills our heart with his spirit and we take comfort in him peace I leave with you my peace I give unto you not as the world gives give I unto you let your heart let not your heart be troubled excuse me neither let it be afraid so he sends us his spirit and his spirit is in us and leads us and guides us and warms us and gives us strength and and Jesus talks about this quite a bit in Matthew in uh, John 14 15 and even 16 the comforter and he sh he gives us comfort and we know that in the world we shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world Jesus that is and so we can put all of our rest, our faith, our hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. He has overcome the world. And we 
overcome the world when we have faith in him when we believe on him who has overcome the world but he that believes right there who is he that overcomes the world but he that believes that Jesus is the Son of God and of course um, because he has overcome we have overcome through him all right now this movie here this um, you know UFO alien stuff there's no hope in any of this stuff here this is just weird weird stuff here there's no hope in it and we are designed in such a way that our hope is only filled by faith in the Lord Jesus Christ without the Lord Jesus Christ there is no hope all right so you know he goes on to talk about how what you know what a water wonderful uh, person he is and he's building schools and helping out people in uh, some foreign country that's great man G of the good job of the Lord and then he goes on to quote Isaiah 11 and again Isaiah 11 makes no mention of Jesus Christ reigning a thousand years if it did you'd have to throw out your entire Bible uh, and then he, he's quoting from the New King James Version and the New King James Version is not a New King James Bible at all. Its sole purpose is to get people away from the true Word of God and introduce them to the world of corrupt Bible versions. And its sole purpose is to, uh, it, and it, that's, the sole, that's the purpose of the New King James Version, which is not a New King James Version at all. And the, the justification, or how do I say this, the the only reason that they come up with these, um, you know, they'll say that, well, the translation is based on manuscripts. It's not based on any manuscript at all. It's based on copyright laws. They want to be able to sell their Bible version and make the money. That's the only reason why you see so many different Bible versions today. They're all corrupt. The King James Bible is the perfect pure word of God in the English language and people that reject that do not believe in any Bible anywhere in any language at any time in human history anywhere on the earth they don't believe in any Bible law but those of us that know God know that he has given us the pure Word of God in the English language and it's the King James Bible look the Word of God endures through all languages for all time forever and ever it's not stuck in a language you don't have to learn five different languages to have an idea what God says you can know exactly what God says by believing in the Bible you hold in your hands all right the secret the key is of faith it's always been about faith all right so I'm not sure is he adding anything more to this? So, just trying to make the claim that <clears throat> Isaiah 11 uh, somehow supports this idea of a millennial reign, and it does not. In Revelation 20, this thousand years are those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today. If Jesus is not reigning in your life right now, how can you rightly say that you are saved? So we do this. First of all, the verses 2 and 3 is talking about Satan uh, being bound for the thousand years and then being loosed. And the purpose for him being loosed is to uh, gather together the unsaved. All right, Just as the angels of God gather the saved on Judgment Day, the, the devil will gather the unsaved and fire will come down from God out of heaven and devour them all and this goes back to Genesis 3 and where it says I will put enmity between thee and thy and the woman between thy seed and her seed and it shall bruise 
thy head and it shall bruise his heel and his heel is Jesus till I make thine enemy thy footstool and of course in verse 9 here we see oops where am I at here in verse 9 here it says fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all and that's because we are up in the air right just like what we read in uh, that's interesting. Just like what we read in First Thessalonians um, four, sixteen and seventeen, I think. I don't remember. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord the judgment is are you saved or are you not saved it's real simple all right that's the judgment the great day of the Lord there is no other judgment you hear about people uh, well you're gonna be judged for your sins well if you if you're not saved the judgment is death if you are saved, the judgment is life. That's the judgment. The great day of the Lord it is the judgment day. And if you are saved, you are going to be lifted up, resurrected, just as our Lord Jesus Christ was resurrected. We shall be resurrected up into the air to meet the Lord in the air when he, when he returns in the clouds of heaven. There is no other resurrection. There is no other judgment. There is no other great day of the Lord. These are all the same thing. It's very simple. It's not rocket science. And the scripture has concluded all under sin. So without faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you got no chance. Right? So very important to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, uh, I don't know how, how in the world do you preach the Bible and then ignore what the Bible says. It's beyond me. So... In verses 4 and 6, we get the mention of they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It's, this does not say anything at all about Jesus reigning a thousand years. It would be completely contradictory to what the Bible says if it did say Jesus reigns a thousand years. You'd have to throw out the entire Bible or rewrite it or something, man. You'd be in big trouble with the Lord for sure. Verse 33, Luke 1, verse 33, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So this idea that Jesus reigns a thousand years is not in the Bible. It's not here in Revelation 20 anywhere. Verse 4, 5, 6, 7, it's not there. Blessed and holy is he that has part of the first resurrection on such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Right now the second death has no power over us that are saved. We are born of the Spirit of God. We are a new creature. Now we shall never die. We have everlasting life. <clears throat> and so the... The second death has no power over us right now. So how can you rightly say that you are saved if Jesus is not reigning in your life right now? And of course, we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And we are commanded to go and preach the gospel to every creature. Right? And so that's what we are. We are priests of God right now. Priests of God and of Christ. And we reign with Christ right now. We are born of God. We have Jesus in us, and we are in Him. He abides in us. We abide in Him. And um, so this idea that Jesus reigns a thousand years is nonsensical. All you're doing, other than lying, is you're saying to the unsaved people, you can wait until after Jesus comes to start believing Him. And it's, that's not true at all. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. There are no more chances to be saved. You blew it. You had your opportunity, and you blew it. It's over. 
It's the end of the world. The game is up. There are no more chances to be saved when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And uh, you hear these people talk about the thousand year reign of Christ. And you, got, you can't help but wonder, well, what happens when Jesus stops reigning at the end of the thousand years? And there's this video right here. Let's listen. After his millennial reign, he will hand over the kingdom to God the Father and abolish... And, and he'll, he's going to hand... Jesus is going to stop reigning... And he's going to hand over his kingdom. Jesus is going to hand over his kingdom to... Wait a second. What did it say in Luke? I can't remember. Something in Luke... Oh, I had it right there, didn't I? What's this verse here say? And he shall reign over the house of Jacob, of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Oh, wait a second. But this guy says, After his millennial reign, he will hand over the kingdom to God. The He'll hand over the kingdom. His reign, so that somebody lied here. Either the Bible's lying or this guy's lying. And I'm going to put my money on this guy being a liar. It's unbelievable. It, to me, it's as if these people have never read the Bible. It's incredible. Now, let's listen to what John has to reply. All right, so. Oh, so. So John, he wants to shift the argument and direct it away from my main point, and that is nowhere in the Bible does it say Jesus reigns for a thousand years. <clears throat> it's not there. It's not found anywhere in the Bible. He won't address it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote this here. Alright, so poor John, he don't want to look at the Bible. He just wants, I mean, to me this is girlish. John, this is girlish. You won't address Revelation 20? Yeah, here, I'm, I want to be open about everything that's said here. You, Rather than pointing to the Bible, you point to God questions. And these guys, I looked at them several times, they're all a bunch of, bunch of idiots. They are. And none of them, and most of them, don't believe in any Bible at all. And they make up the weirdest, strangest doctrines you'll ever hear in your life. How about this? How about reading the Bible, John? How about believing the Bible that you hold in your hands? And, and maybe this ain't the channel for you, he says. Well, I don't care about the channel, buddy. I care about you. That's why I'm bringing you the truth. There's no other reason for me to bring you the truth other than I want to share the truth with you and anybody else. You're talking about the subject, and you're wrong. 
and you're lying about it and you don't even know you're lying about it because you won't take five minutes to read the book of Revelation the verb to read chapter 20 all right I mean if you read the what's it take two hours to read 22 chapters but um, you know people will sit down and watch uh, girls gone wild on Cinemax for two hours but they won't spend two hours reading the Bible I'm not kidding you I really seriously wonder all these people preaching the Bible do they even read the Bible how could you read the Bible and not be aware number one that there's no mention of Jesus reigning a thousand years and then two it's very obvious Jesus reigns forever Jesus is God Almighty okay so that's enough of this stuff here all right if anybody has any questions follow us please let's talk about it man am I being too hard on this guy really he won't address the F Revelation 20 and I'm being tough on him I think that's appropriate if this was a girl I probably wouldn't be so tough on him right take a look at this guy tattoo got tattoos that he likes to show off so I assume he's a tough guy right now what people that wear tattoos After the first avatar shave their head aren't that tough guys man. tough guys so he can't handle me saying that people that got questions are idiots that's too tough for him that you can't handle it I don't know what to tell you buddy yeah I can be tough I get it I mean harsh I get it but we're talking about the Bible and I take the Bible very serious and here you are standing before God and everybody saying Jesus Christ he's gonna reign a thousand years and then it's over I got a problem with that man I got a big problem with that I ain't got such a big problem with your tattoos and your bald head I don't care about that stuff what I care about is what you're preaching and you're preaching this idea that is not supported by the Bible at all. So, anyways, tell me, uh, you know, tell me what you think in the comments. Tell me I'm stupid. Tell me I'm an idiot. And tell me what I can do better. Thank you.